Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Tony Lopez here with Alternative Living Spaces. I hope you've been enjoying our series on how to build your own shipping container home and excited for today's topic. Uh, today, we're going to be going over the topic of window installation. Uh, now, initially, it may not seem like the most important topic, but I will tell you, you know, after building container homes for close to seven years now, this topic is super important. It is so important that you uh, pick the right types of windows, um, and we're going to go over all those details, and that you install them properly. And so we'll be going over step-by-step step how we actually install our windows. There's going to be some things that we share uh, that are going to save you big time in terms of uh, potential leaks or anything along those lines. If there's one thing that, that we have learned over the years, uh, your biggest enemy uh, when it comes to building a container home is water. And window leaks is actually one of the main causes of damage that container homes can, can that can happen in a container home. And so I uh, definitely encourage you uh, that this is going to be a really good topic to buckle down for, take some notes, and truly understand what you need to do in terms of window installation. Uh, before we jump in, uh, I want to share this with you. We do have a free video training that I put together uh, it's going to go over some really great topics. Uh, if you're interested in building your own container home, if you're serious about it, uh, you do not want to skip out and miss this video. Uh, it's going to be a little over 30 minutes long uh, and basically share, sharing with you some of the biggest lessons I've learned after building over 100 shipping container homes. Uh, it's going to save you time and money on your build and a lot of headaches. So I definitely would encourage you to go ahead and check that out. Now with that, uh, let's go ahead and dive right in and we will begin our discussion of window installation. Uh, first thing is to just go over the different types of windows uh, in terms of the options that you have. Uh, first option is gonna be related to the material of the frame of your window. Uh, the three most common window frame options that um, are seen are typically vinyl, wood, and aluminum. Um, now, when you're navigating what is the best one to use for a container home, uh, it does depend on kind of the final application, right? So if you're budget conscious and you're trying to uh, get a window that's going to work well but not break the bank, vinyl is going to be a great option. If you're looking for something that's of the highest quality and it's going to be ideal for uh, certain climates that may even deal with hurricanes and things like that, you're going to want to go with aluminum windows. Uh, we haven't really messed around much with wood windows. Uh, one of the reasons I'm hesitant to use wood windows for a container, uh, especially for where we're at, we're based in Las Vegas, Nevada. And in the summers, it can get honestly up to 120 degrees. Uh, and that means the, the container, which is a conductor, is going to get extremely hot. And we've just noticed that wood mixed with the metal container, especially uh, in terms of trying to make sure things are watertight, it can lead to issues, right? The wood can shrink, the wood can crack. Now water has an opportunity to get in. So we've been really happy using vinyl windows as well as aluminum. Um, when it comes to uh, the glass in the window, there's also a few options. So there's single pane, double pane, and triple pane. Uh, you don't really see single pane windows used very often. Uh, the energy efficiency on a single pane window isn't good typically. So uh, the most common windows you'll see uh, are going to be double pane windows. Uh, that's in most homes, at least here in Vegas. Uh, and those are great. You know, energy efficiency on those is solid. Um, the, the highest level of energy efficiency you're going to get is going to be out of a triple pane window. Now, this is going to be a lot more expensive. Um, and you'll notice kind of as you go up the ladder there, prices do increase. Uh, so triple pane windows are not cheap. Um, but in some situations, they're necessary, especially uh, as we continue, we'll be going over codes and meeting certain energy efficiencies. Uh, and so that might be helpful or even required for your build. Lastly, in this section, you see is you have different color options. Uh, so this is uh, definitely related to the vinyl windows as well. That's typically what we're using on our builds. Um, and, you know, the standard colors are usually like a white or an almond uh, that's going to be your base price uh, options when you're talking to different vendors. Um, and then in, it, as you kind of get more creative with your colors, you can see there are some options for some browns or black. Uh, they are going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, right now, we're getting our windows from Allside. We've also uh, gotten them from Milgard and also just directly from Lowe's as well. 
Uh, they, they will work with Pella and some other companies. And so uh, there's a lot of different window vendors out there. And most of them will give you uh, these different types of options. Uh, in terms of style and look and aesthetic, I personally do love the black windows. I think it looks really clean on the containers. If you're doing a black container with black windows or a white container and you want the windows to pop and you do them in black, really can look nice. Some additional options as you're considering uh, your windows are going to be the type of glass. Um, now, there's a few different options that it's showing here. Uh, you know, the insulated glass is going to be most common for your build. Uh, it shows an example there of a triple pane window. Um, but, you know, you may consider wanting to do frosted glass, uh, like we just did a unit and uh, inside the bathroom in the shower, uh, sh the client wanted a frosted glass window. And so as you look at this image here, uh, it was frosted glass, but it was also tempered glass. Um, and so we'll discuss when you need tempered glass, but there's a variety of options you can choose. Um, and then lastly, under options is custom sizing. Uh, so you can see an example here of, you know, four really custom angled windows. So if you're looking to do something really creative uh, and you are working with a window vendor, they may have options for custom sizing. Uh, on our container homes, actually, most of our windows are custom sizes. Uh, we feel like we can get a little bit more of a modern look by going with a custom size window instead of your traditional three by four or four by four style windows. Uh, I want to go over a few slides here on code requirements. Uh, this is really an important topic, you know, especially if you are doing a permitted build, you're going to want to pay close attention here. Uh, so first is uh, related to egress windows. Uh, so if you do have a habitable space, you are going to need an egress window or door. Now, here is some of the explanation for uh, what the requirements are for the egress window. Um, for those of you that are wondering what the heck is an egress window. Uh, so the reason why you want an egress window is twofold. One is in case of emergency, you need a way to exit your home. Um, and what you don't want is to only have one exit at the very front of your home. And if you're in a bedroom in the back, and there's a fire in the middle of the container, you have no way to exit. And so it's important that uh, you do follow regulations as it relates to egress windows. Um, and the second reason is in case there is a fire and someone needs to get in and put it out, firefighter, uh, they want to have a way to get in. Uh, so these regulations, you look here, it shows you uh, some of the details as it relates to the exact uh, opening size that you need, uh, how high from the floor, does that window uh, need to stay under? Um, things like that. And the purpose of, of these regulations is that, you know, they want you to be able to fit through the window and they want you to be able to climb up and get through it. It can't be too high and the opening can't be too small. So you can see here that you can't exceed 44 inches from the finished floor. Uh, you need a minimum of 5.7 square feet for that opening. Uh, your height has to be at least 24 inches high and your width has to be at least 20 inches wide. So egress windows, really important. Uh, you can see in the images here as well that these windows are sliding windows. They can be an up-down window or a left-right slider. You even do see some, some occasional people using more of like a French-style window where the whole window will open in a certain direction, which those can get kind of pricey. Uh, there's also awning windows where the whole window folds up and it's hinged on the top. Um, and so, you know, as long as you're meeting those requirements, you got to have at least 24 inches in height and at least 20 inches in width, uh, meeting 5.7 square feet. So uh, with that, uh, on to uh, some additional code requirements. Next one is energy efficiency. Uh, so the way that Windows in terms of energy efficiency is tracked is really twofold. Number one, you're going to see here is the U factor rating. And then number two, you're going to see the SGHC rating, which is that solar heat gain coefficient. Um, now, any windows that you're buying from a reputable vendor will be able to give you this specific information. And it's going to be really important to pay attention to what the U factor is and what that solar heat gain coefficient is. Um, typically, if you're building in an area with high regulation, a good example would be California. They do have a Title 24 energy report that you're going to need to pass, which basically means you're going to need to make sure your home meets minimum energy efficiency requirements for the state of California. Um, you typically will work with someone on that report 
And if you're working with an architect, they're going to be able to help you to understand what standards you're going to need to, you're going to, need to hit for your window ratings. Uh, you're going to want to take those standards to your window vendor and make sure that the windows you're getting are going to pass energy code. The last thing you want to do is order 20 windows for your house. They show up and they don't meet code and you're going to have a lot of trouble trying to use them in your build. So you want to do your, your homework up front. Um, typically, uh, the more glass you have in a home, the more efficient your windows are going to need to be. The less glass you have in a home means the more walls with insulation you're going to have and you can get away with potentially a little bit less efficiency. So uh, with that, um, one more topic on code requirements is tempered glass. Uh, so going over some of the notes here, you can see uh, typically it's going to be required in wet areas. So this is going to be bathrooms, saunas, an area with a hot tub. Um, uh, you'll see at the bottom it talks about staircases. Uh, this might be not super common for container homes since it's usually maybe single story or single container conversions. But uh, you do want to be aware of what codes are out there for the requirement for tempered glass. Um, and then you, you see there right in the middle, this is probably the most common one. Um, and it basically says that uh, if you are installing a piece of glass, aka a window, and it's going to be 18 inches or less from the floor, uh, it's typically going to need to be uh, tempered glass. So a good example is that image at the bottom. Those are, uh, are basically the original shipping container doors. We convert them into entry doors and do all glass. And uh, in that situation, that's tempered glass. Um, it's also dual pane glass just to make sure it's energy efficient. Uh, and you might wonder what is tempered glass and why do you have to have those in, in those specific areas? It goes back to safety. Um, what they don't want happening is you have a window that's low to the ground. Someone backs up and kicks it or you're moving something in a, a coffee table and you slide it into the window and it shatters. You don't want it shattering in large shards. Uh, so you see this image here. Uh, th when, it, when it does end up shattering, it ends up looking like that, right? It's a bunch of really tiny pieces of glass. If it does start shattering and kind of uh, not being held within itself, uh, it's a bunch of small piece, pieces of glass so you're not at, you know, not at harm uh, versus it being basically uh, just regular glass and then it's literally glass shards, which would not be fun. So um, with that, uh, we're going to transition a little bit into uh, the actual how-tos of doing the window installation. So a couple of First things is uh, related to uh, types of windows again. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we typically will use vinyl windows. Um, now with vinyl windows, there are a few different options that you can get in terms of how the frame is set up and styled for the installation. Um, we have a few examples listed here. First one is a nailing fin. Uh, next, it says a rebate flange, also known as a retrofit window. Uh, these are most common in remodeling where you're taking a an existing window out and you need to replace it um, and it has to be done from the exterior completely so you don't have to do a ton of uh you know it minimizes damage control basically right keeps it more cost efficient uh then you have box frame windows also sometimes known as block frame windows that's basically where there's no nail fin there's no front fin as well um, and that is the kind of window that can just simply slide right in you screw it from the sides to install it um, now we've used all three of these windows and we've had a lot of experience with all of them. Early on, we simply used retrofit windows. Uh, we used that on all of our builds. And it, it wasn't bad. It was okay using them. Um, it, it, I'd say the upside of a retrofit window is it does have a, a basically that front fin that goes around the window. Gives it a little bit of a nice look. Um, but we noticed when it came to installation of the window, uh, you know, we would end up having some screw, some screws going in through the sides of the window or through that front fin, and it just didn't work the best. And then we'd notice sometimes it would separate at the top and water would start entering the windows from there. So um, they're not a bad option. I'd say they're probably uh, the second best option. Um, then we went and switched to the block frame windows, which I'll show you here, uh, which basically was that example without a fin at all. And on the block frame windows, uh, this was my least favorite option that we've used. And the reason is it made it really difficult to seal the windows and keep them watertight. Um, you know, as you're doing a container build, you have your steel frame, you're installing your window into that frame, but now you have to find a way to make sure water doesn't enter into your home. And with the block frame window, I mean, 
if you made a steel frame uh, in terms of for your window that was just a little bit too big for the window, now you had to find ways to fill in the gaps all the way around it. And it just made it a little bit too complicated. So I'd say I, I would not recommend the box frame or block frame windows. Um, and most recently, probably about a year ago, we transitioned to using nail thin windows. Um, now, these have certainly been my favorite uh, type of window to use. Uh, installation of them is so simple. I think install probably takes a third of the time versus when we were using these other two options. The installation is also way more secure and it allows you the ability to seal up your windows extremely well. So we'll be going into detail on how we install our fin windows in these next slides. Um, but before we do that, just a couple final points you can see there on the right. Um, if you're doing nail fin windows, uh, you're going to want to install these prior to framing. And it is a little bit different when you're working with a container. Typically, nail fin windows are used in traditional stick-built uh, construction. So here in Vegas, you'll see track homes all over the place where they install the nail fin windows. They get installed from the outside. Um, and then from there, they flash around it and they'll finish the house with some stucco or siding. Um, but with the container, it's a lot different. Um, you actually will, will install your window from the inside, attach it to your metal frame and then seal it. So uh, we'll be going over that uh, exactly how that goes, but just want to make the point that you will install your nail fin windows prior to your interior wood framing or metal framing or whatever you're using. Um, uh, last thing is you do want to seal your window very thoroughly. We'll be walking through that. Uh, we typically will use OSI Quad Max. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. We just genuinely do use them and it works great. You can get it from typically like a Lowe's or a Home Depot. Um, and we've been really happy with it. And then we typically will use those self-tapping metal screws also for the installation. Uh, and the size on that, that would be a one and one quarter inch uh, self-tapping metal screw. Um, we do like the hex type of uh, pattern on the top so you can get a better grip as you're trying to screw into what could be some pretty thick steel uh, that is the frame of your window. So uh, with that, let's dive into step by step exactly how we do this. Um, so step one, uh, you're going to basically install all that OSI around the entire perimeter of your window. Now, this is going to be pressed up against the steel frame that you made from your for your window, and this will all be done from inside the container. So step one, put a bunch of OSI all the way around. Uh, be very liberal, very generous. Use as much as you want. You really want to make sure you create a really good seal. Uh, step number two is basically pressing it up against the steel opening that you made for your window. Uh, now, we now will use a two by two tube steel for our openings. We go over this in some previous build videos you can check out as well. Um, but you want to go ahead and press that in. It's really important when you're doing your windows that you have a very tight fit as you're trying to press that window in. You do not want to be installing a window that say is 48 inches 40 by 48 inches into a hole that is an inch bigger all the way around. Like that is going to cause you chaos in terms of how to uh, properly seal it and make it watertight. You want that thing being very, very snug as it goes in. So you're looking at ideally having about an eighth of an inch around the perimeter of the window of space as you're putting that in. It's for that reason that I actually recommend you get your windows really early on so that you can take the exact measurement of the window, create your frame, test fit it to make sure it's snug before you install your metal frame into your container. Um, on that same note, uh, this is definitely a deep dive into windows, by the way. Um, and, and so I hope that's okay with you. Um, but you'll notice uh, when you purchase your windows, they have the size of the window and then there's an actual size. So you may order some windows that are 48 inches by 48 inches, but the actual size of the window might be 47 and a half by 47 and a half. So you really wanna look into those details. And then a lot of times when you work with a window vendor, they should give you the rough opening, the RO, which is basically the opening that you're going to want to create in your frame for the window to fit snugly. Uh, what we have realized is in some occasions, uh, the actual size is not exactly accurate. And it might be off by an eighth of an inch or uh, maybe even a little more than that. And so uh, it's definitely helpful if you can get those windows up front. So back to step two. 
Um, yep, so go ahead and push your window, compress it against the metal, push it really hard to create a nice seal. And then step number three is basically installing those uh, self-tapper metal screws into the frame. Uh, you're going to be going around the entire perimeter of the window. And we typically recommend the spacing on those self-tappers to be about every four to six inches. Um, after you do that, you can move on to step number four. You can see in that image that the self-tappers are already installed at this point. Um, and this is putting another layer of OSI where the interior vinyl meets the metal. Um, now this uh, can seem like a lot, but you know what, at the end of the day, I would want to sleep well at night knowing that my windows were sealed up excellent. So uh, we go ahead and uh, put the OSI around the whole perimeter of the interior right there. Uh, you can see there in the image, we do use a spray bottle. You can put some Dawn soap in there. It just allows you to smooth out that OSI a lot better. And there's a lot of other sealant brands out there. So as long as you're getting a really good window sealant, uh, you'll be in good shape. Uh, step five will be the third sealant that you're going to be adding. And that's going to be to the front of the window. Now this is an image showing the front exterior of the container installation. Uh, a small note is you'll see there at the bottom of the window, there's a little weep hole. Um, now I do want to make the point that when you're installing your windows, there is a right direction to install them in terms of up and down. You do need to make sure that your weep holes are at the bottom. And the function of the weep holes is simply any water that gets in the container, it has a way or I'm sorry, that gets into your window has a way to exit. So uh, you, we, this is, in, in this step is basically the beauty seal. Uh, so we're adding a beauty seal all the way around the window just to create that first initial uh, sealant to prevent water from coming in and give it a nice look as it transitions from the window to the metal. Lastly, step number six uh, is simply the topic of a drip edge. Um, we definitely do recommend having a drip edge over your windows. This is just another layer of protection to make sure that it's watertight, that you don't have water infiltrating it or running down the face of the window. Um, and so uh, this is also something that we recommend in terms of your entry doors, having a nice little drip edge over the top of them. Uh, the image that I had just shown you, and I'll go back to that, is actually one that we welded on. So we just made that and welded it to the top of the tube steel there. But you don't have to use that style of drip edge. There's also ones that you can buy that are already pre-made that you'll simply attach over the window. And at the end of the day, the purpose of that drip edge is to deflect the water from running down the face of the window or your door, ultimately just helping to prevent uh, any water from entering into the container. So um, uh, with that, that is uh, essentially, oops, let me go back here, uh, completes the window installation process. Uh, this is actually a container that we just finished up. Uh, and this one had, I think it was maybe 16 or 18 windows. So fun one to show you guys. Uh, we did the vinyl windows on this and uh, these are all custom size windows. So uh, I'll go full screen here. Um, and you can see, I think these ones were 20 inches by 77 inches. Uh, we had about 10 of them that were all that exact same size. And so uh, a lot of windows to install there. But one thing that we realized and learned is these were all thin windows. And as a result, it made the installation really easy, made sealing them up really easy. So I do think that's the way to go. Um, now with that, uh, just final announcement. I just want to remind you and encourage you uh, this free training that we put together. Um, yeah, I think it's really going to be helpful for you. If, you. if you got a lot out of this video and you enjoy our content as it relates to how to build container homes, uh, this is something that's going to add a lot of value to you. So I encourage you to check that out. And with that, that's all for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we have more content coming soon. It's going to be going over electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and right down the line on how to build out your container home. Uh, if you want to stay connected with us, uh, feel free to check us out at alternativelivingspaces.com. Also on, all, on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at, social, at uh, Alternative Living Spaces. And it would encourage you to subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. And do us a favor, if this added value to you, if you could please hit that like button. And we'll see you on the next video.